Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Christos Anisti. Christ said to the Samaritan woman, I speak to you, I who speak to you am he. I who speak to you am he. He here in this conversation is the Messiah. He told her, she asked to him, we're looking for the Messiah. She said, I am he. Now, the word Messiah, al Messiah, um, it's actually not a name, it's a title. You have to understand the word Christ. Jesus, our Lord, his name is Jesus. But his title is the Christ, al Messiah, the Messiah. He Messiah is the anointed one. Anointed one means he is special. He is special. He is unique in so many ways. And I want to spend a few minutes to ask, to ask a question. Who are you, O Lord, to me? Who are you, O Lord, to me? Who were you to the Samaritan woman? And I am being, all of us here, the Samaritan woman, okay, looking for you. Who are you to us? I want to, I think if you really understand this very, very special, and very rich chapter, chapter 4, you'll, you can find at least a dozen roles that Christ has played or has, has offered to the Samaritan woman and to all of us. I want to take three. I like three pointers because it's easy to remember three points. Beyond that, it becomes hard to remember. Friend, counselor, savior. Hmm, let's remember. Huh? Friend, and number one? Friend. Number two? Counselor. Number three? Savior. Okay? It's very, it's very easy to remember. A friend. For many of us, this, especially this past year, was filled with isolation. Um, and even despite all the advances in technology and Zoom and WebEx and social media, we watched our relationships change and drift apart. And we are somehow we're grieving that loss of, of closeness. I was talking to a parent Ask him to spend some time with your kids as a kid. My kids do not want to spend time with me. They just want to be in the room on their device. So sad. These kids who want to be on their device all the time and not spend time with me are like the Samaritan woman who is isolated. She was isolated. She could not, she was cut off from the community. She could not bond with them. So she did her own thing by going to the well in the heat of the day, when it's so hot. Usually people get water when, typically at sunrise. Because if you go at sunset, you're gonna get dark on your way back. So if you go at sunrise, still not too hot, it will get brighter as the time goes by. Okay, so she was going there in the, in the heat of the day to avoid all the people, because she put herself in isolation. But we know that God, Christ, can redeem what was broken. That Christ cares about, us, about all of us being connected to one another. Okay, Because we are the body, His body. The, body. the church is nothing other than the body of Christ. And you know, you can't have cells living on their own. You can't have your brain cells in one place and your liver cells in another place and your muscle cells. All of them have to be connected together. That's what makes the body function. Um, God created us. It was not good for man to be alone. Remember the beginning in Genesis. It was not good for man to be alone. God did not create us to be alone, isolated on our devices or doing whatever. This is not God's plan. It's exactly the opposite of God's plan for us. Um, God gave us His Holy Spirit, 
who is working in, inside of us. And he says this is the true worshipers who worship God in the spirit. In the spirit. They don't just worship by saying hymns or singing, going through the motions. They worship him through the spirit. And the spirit understands what we're facing and prays on our behalf. So whenever you feel alone, we, are, we should be reminded that Christ is right there, right there near us. And God is still working on us to restore us back. God, remember, the Samaritan woman who would not talk to the townspeople went to the townspeople herself and said, Come, I'll show you a man who, to who told me everything I did. She con he connected her back to her community. This is what Christ wants to do to you. want to connect you back to your community. Whether it is your family, whether it's your friends, whether it's the church, whether it's the Sunday school or Bible study, whether it is your father of confession, God, Christ, here as a friend, wants to connect you back. Let us stop. We're done with the isolation. We're done with this, you know, being bu bubbled up. This is now what Christ wants us to do or wants us to be. So I hope you, especially young generation, take this message to heart. Christ came to bring you back. Let's re ask him to, re to take it to establish our relationship and connection and show us how to make these meaningful connections back. Um, even if it may feel awkward or uncomfortable in the beginning. Ultimately, we want our loneliness to lead us, even though God allowed us to, be, to go through this year or whatever time of loneliness or isolation, to help us appreciate His presence, to get closer to Him and to the people that, have, that He called us to love and support. So pray to Him today to take my isolation, my disconnection, our social anxiety, our fears, and turn it into something beautiful that draws the world closer to him and to one another. He's your friend. He wants you to get back on track. When, especially when there's no one around. When everybody abandons you, he's there. Number one. Number two on what he said, he is what? Friend and what? Counselor. Counselor. Come see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Here, um, this is what you go to counselor to tell you everything, to figure things out, to figure what's going, what's wrong with you. And Christ did exactly the same. He figured out what was wrong with her. He counseled her. He counseled her. And here we have, uh, I want to kind of uh, go on a little tangent, but an important tangent here, because we need that Christ-based counseling in our life. Christ-based counseling. We need Christian counseling. It's, and it's quite distinct, quite distinct from the secular counseling you may found in your, maybe in your, um, you know, in school or work or, or at the doctor. It's different. Um, because a Christian counseling seeks to carefully discover those areas in which a Christian may be disobedient to the principles and commandments of the Scripture and help him learn how to lovingly submit to God's will. So somebody who will counsel you from a Christian perspective will tell you not just what's wrong with you, but how have you deviated from the biblical standard and how to lovingly get you back to that, a, to that biblical standard that God has given us. And uh, the Christian counselors approach psychology through the lens of the Bible. They have to. Um, is the Bible the source, ultimate source of all truth? We need to have that, that counsel. This could, this could be from a professional Christian counselor. It could be from a father of confession. It could be from a servant. It could have several levels. So it's not like, you know, it's limited to one or two people. But it's, it's, it's important because it cares... On, on the whole person, body, soul, and spirit. Um, and it helps us maintain values that are taught in the Bible. 
And to regain a sense of hope in life that's found in Christ. Remember, she was hopeless, that woman. To regain the source of hope in her life. Um, to, help, to help every person achieve a better understanding of themselves as part of God's plan. As part of God's plan, which is rooted you know, in the scripture and through the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Um, the purpose is to make people aware of the sin in their lives, the sin in their lives that caused them suffering. But remember, when we, have, when we get depressed, when you get bouts of anger, when we get all kinds of you know, problems in our thinking, it's because from sin. It's, it has to do with sin, or, or sin has to has a play a factor in it. Um, and also, a, a Christ... This not only pinpointed her, oh, you were wrong here or you're wrong there. No, he also pinpointed to her the value and her worth. Her value and her worth. You know, when he told her, well said, something she probably she never ever heard in a very, very long time. So, um, she, she, he told her, you know, how much she was she worth it to him. How much she was worth it to him. God's standard is set right here, okay, set right here, and does not change. God's standard, you have, to, you have to pay attention to this, especially young people. God's standard is right there, okay, and does not change, does not go up or down, does not get updated or upgraded or modified. It has always been the case. The world standard was, probably at some point it began where God's standard was, but slowly but surely began to erode. I don't know if you have heard about beach erosion. Every time there's a big storm, superstorm, sandy, whatever, it, 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 uh, it takes away some of the sand and begins to eat the, the shoreline. That's why they have to preserve the shoreline so you can go and find the beach at some point. If they don't do that, you'll never find it because every time storm comes, it erodes it. So every time we have a social storm, a social storm, we begin to find the standard to erode a little bit. You know, 1960s began to come down a little bit, a few notches down. And this become the standard, what's acceptable for the society. Then the 70s come, the 80s come, the 90s come, the th then the new millennium comes. And every, you know, we don't even have to see change over the decades. Now the change is over years and months. Every few months something is new is coming. And something now new is being sold to us as acceptable and normal. And we begin to buy into it. And when you go to, a, to, a, to, a, to somebody to counsel you, whether it's, it could be a friend or a secular counsel, he will not refer to that biblical God-given standard. They'll say, no, compare yourself to what's now acceptable. Oh, these things that were uh, diseases are now declassified now. They're de declassified and uh, it's just normal. It's fine to do this and do that and so forth. And begin to go along. Uh, but uh, this doesn't solve the problem. The problem is that we deviated from the God-given standard that does not change whatsoever. He said the heaven and earth will go away, but my little iota or tittle, tittle is, is like a, it's like a, a, and when they write the Greek uh, at the time of Christ, they contracted the iota into like, like an apostrophe. It's like an apostrophe. But he said one small apostrophe from my word is not going to change. Seek good Christian based counsel advice. When we follow advice of the world, it's not going to lead us to Christ. So he is our friend. He will take us out of isolation, connect us back. He's our counselor who will remind us who, what we were, what we're supposed to do and not settle for anything else. And number three, which is very important and fundamental. That's why I want to keep it to the end. He's our savior. The, 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 the townspeople said to the woman, now we believe not because of what you said, although she said a lot, for we ourselves have heard him and we know that this is indeed Christ, the Savior of the world. He is not 
a savior of the world. He is the savior of the world. This definitive article here implies uniqueness. He is the savior of the world. Without Christ, humanity is confused and looks for salvation in all sorts of direction. But he told her, you, wor you worship what you do not know. We know what we worship for salvation of the Jews. Salvation has come from the, the Jews, not, not because there were anything special about them, but they were entrusted with the message of salvation, with the covenant, to keep it, for, to preserve it for us until Christ came and presented it to, a, to all the world. So you are looking for salvation where you will not find salvation. I think in one of the prophets, I think Jeremiah said, you are digging all these wells and they are all dry wells. They, have, they cannot keep water. You find, you dig, 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 and they find a little bit of water, and then it's all gone because the, the, it's, not, it's not a well-preserved well. If you ever are, are, ble and you are uh, blessed enough to go, you can go and see Jacob's well. Still to this day, you go and draw water out of Jacob's well and drink from water from Jacob's well. He is a sure way of salvation. The world is offering us alternative, you know, ideas. Oh, this will, the, water, the world will become better if we do this and we do that, if we stand for this or stand for that. And all these socio-political ideas and movements are offering some kind of salvation. This is how we're going to fix the world. I'm sorry. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you worship. We in church know what we worship and who we worship. And we know he is the savior of the world. He said, you'll see, you hear it in, the, in a few weeks, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I'm the way. Again, it's another the definitive article. He did not say a way out of many ways. He did not say, you know, I am a truth among many truths, alternative truth. Or I am a life. I offer you a lifestyle among other lifestyles. He is very definitive. Again, the word the here makes it so unique. I am the unique way, unique truth, and I give you the unique life. He is the savior of the world. You have to see him here as my only source of hope. My only source of hope. He is what, who will transform my life around. This is what salvation is. We, say, uh, we said in, in the Holy Week, my good savior, what does it mean? That he can, the one who can save me from my mess. Save me from years coming to the well in the middle of the day, in the heat of the day. Save me from my sin. It's going from the Samaritan woman going from one relationship to the next to the next and living in total sin. He is the savior of the world. Please make sure that you walk out of this door realizing I have no hope in my life except in you. It's such a fundamental concept. And that can change your life. We sometimes find so, become so resistant to change. You know what? Because I can figure things my own. Now this is how, when he is my savior, he told me something, I listen to him. It becomes so natural to obey and to let go of my ego and let go of my, all these things that are just kind of shackling me up. She was shackled, the Samaritan woman. He says, come into, and we, we say this in the absolution. Oh Lord Jesus Christ, who, who broke all the bond of our sins, who broke all the bonds of through his life giving sufferings. Let Christ free you when you believe in him, when you submit to him and let go of anything except him. He is your friend, huh? When you're lonely. He is your counselor when you feel down. And he's your savior when I feel like a total mess. To our Lord be your glory now and to the end of the ages. Amen. Oh, no.